Hi, we're going to try three more tweens. This is part two of the tweening introduction. And we're going to uh, try to attempt something that's going to give us something that looks like this a little bit. Just adding more elements to it. Whoop. No, we can do better than that. That's what we did last time. Well, let's see if we can do something that looks a little bit more like this. The idea of putting a photo in, the idea of having objects that expand in size, and other objects that fade in and fade out to try to create a little welcome message for your website portfolios. So it's all going to start um, basically here. This is where we left off and all we did was we had text elements that came into play and used some simple tweening. Uh, now we're going to start drawing more objects and remember those rules that we used before. Uh, we have to turn whatever elements we want into symbols for them to tween. We have to use one layer for each symbol that's moving or changing its state and then we have to have flanking keyframes so we'll be repeating these things. But we're going to start at rule 2 today and create the layer first because that gives us the freedom to draw this thing without having to move things around later on. So I'm making layer 6 and I'm going to draw a line by using the line tool and I'm going to choose a stroke color that is gray and once we draw this thing we'll change its properties. I'm holding the shift key down as I draw the line so it's perfectly horizontal and this is a good introduction to the properties tool. We can click on any element and check out its properties and see exactly what it's all about. For instance this is a shape clicking on this thing, it's not text, it's actually a movie clip or a symbol. Uh, clicking on a keyframe will bring up the properties about the keyframe. So keep that in mind that you have to click on the object first and then you can edit it or, or change its properties. I'm going to start by changing the properties of this so it's a little bit thicker. There's other things you can do like changing the caps from round to square for aesthetic purposes, but anything off stage is going to look uh, is going to disappear anyway so we don't have to worry about it. But now I've got a little border that's in there and that's looking a little bit better. Now I want to start doing some tweening with this new object and I'll follow my rules again. First rule is I have to turn this thing into a symbol so I'll select it, go to modify and convert to symbol and I'll call this thing line. Now the line starts and finishes all the way through here through the entire animation so I'm going to change some other things about it. I'm going to have it fade into place at about the same time. It'll start first and then the other elements will move in. So I'm on rule three of tweening. I've got a starting keyframe. I choose where I want the ending keyframe to be and hit F6. That invents the flanking keyframe. I right mouse click the space in between and create the classic tween. And so far nothing's changed so now is where I have to start changing the, the qualities of that first version of the element in the first keyframe. I select it, select the keyframe for it first, and then I select the element and that brings up the color effects in its properties window. And it might be folded up, you might have to fold it down like this. We're going to change the alpha value. Alpha is the same as opacity. Right now it says 60%, just happened to say that, it starts with whatever you last set it at. And I'm going to take this down to 0%. Now the ending keyframe should still be at 100%. So when we scrub this thing through you can see it starts with a blank and fades into place as everything else arrives. Get the idea? So that's alpha. We'll come back to that in a bit. I'm going to add another element now and try another kind of tweening. This time I'm going to create a circle. These are really simple shapes but when you put them all together and you align things right they can look pretty snazzy. So for the circle I think I'm going to go ahead and use the circle tool. You may not find it right away but it's underneath this rectangle tool. Click and hold and you can switch this. It's kind of like a multi-tool switch it over to oval and circles consist of two qualities they have a stroke and a fill and the fill right now is blue I'm gonna change that to like a ridiculously pale yellow and the stroke right now is the same as the stroke that was here I'll change that just make it a little darker so it contrasts with the stroke we already have here uh, stroke is another word for line and now when I draw this thing keeping in mind I'm in the right layer I don't want any of this to conflict so I'm gonna draw a circle well, just about anywhere and it should have that color of fill, it should have that color of stroke. If you try to move the object, it's way out of whack, be careful because the fill and the stroke behave separately. The stroke will not move along with the fill unless you double click it. Double click an object, a simple shape like this, and both the stroke and the fill will move. So I'm going to move that roughly into place. Now next I want to do some tweening with this, so back to converting it into a symbol, that's step one. And I'll call this circle. And once you convert it into a symbol, it also effectively groups it, so it's not as easy to break it apart. And the next tool we're going to use is going to be this transform tool. 
transform tool will let us make the object bigger. So I'm going to stretch it out. Now be careful, you can whack it out and stretch it and defy its aspect ratio unless you hold down the shift key as you make it bigger. So I want to make that big enough that it'll encompass the whole title like this. Something like that. And that's going to be my ideal ending shape where I want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit an F6. This is step three of tweening. So I've got an ending keyframe, I've got a starting keyframe, and now I just have to decide what I want to change about its state at the beginning. And I think in this case I'm going to try making the thing really, really big, just because it's kind of neat. In fact, I'm going to make it so big you can't even see it. So it's so big it's consuming the entire stage. And I'll put in that classic tween again and scrub it and see what the effect looks like. So it looks like it kind of comes into place being really large, snaps into place and gives us the end effect. You got it. You can also combine the effect if you wanted to sort of fade in. I could select the object here, clicking on it, and go take a look at its color effect. I could change the alpha, so not only does it sort of zoom out into, into play, it also sort of fades into play too, just like that. And I'll leave it like this. So the last thing we want to play with this time is we're going to try adding a graphic to it. I'm going to make another layer, and this is going to be a graphic. I'll put in a layer called Pick. And to put a graphic into a frame, we're going to use File, Import, and Import to Stage. Now I've got some graphics that are already prepared. I'm going to just use a mugshot from uh, the school photographer. Having a copy of it is kind of handy. Um, I have a copy, I think, in the right folder. And there it is there. So I'll open it. It's also a good idea to have a, a, a graphic that's of an appropriate resolution. And I know this one's fairly small, so I can put it, whoops, put it where I want. Now I'm just trying to move this thing, and I noticed as I grabbed it and moved it, there was a bounding box that was moving. I'm in the circle layer, so the circle is actually moving. Even though I can't see it, I can still grab it. So I'm going to undo this. Make sure you stack these layers so they make sense. If the circle should be underneath this, okay, put it at a lower level. And if you want to affect the picture that you just put in, click on the, the appropriate layer. Always keep your elements separated into layers. And I'm going to put this right about here and see what it would look like if this was all like that. Yeah, okay, that's going to do the job. Now maybe I want to move the pick layer later on so it shows up underneath the circle. Might try that, but for now I'll leave it as it is. But I'm going to start setting up the tween for this. And you get the idea, it's just those three rules over and over again. First, you know, put your, your element in its own layer. Second, convert it to a symbol. And lastly, create your flanking keyframes. So I'm going to hit an F6. And create a classic tween. In this particular case I might want to do the same thing again. I'll just play, play with the uh, alpha level so it's opacity. So now it fades into place like this. And now after that's done I can change the, the uh, location of these things so maybe I can have the circle over top the photo like that. So it sort of covers it over like that too. Good. Doing the job. We can test it out, see how it's looking. Now there's tons more that you can do with this. If you want to try doing something that looks a little more transitional, maybe you want to delay the timing of these things. Maybe you want the picture to show up and then the title to show up quite separately. You can click and drag to select a series of frames and you can shift them in time very, very easily like that. Um, the uh, line, maybe I'll do the same thing with that. Oops. Just going to move this back here so we can have different items arrive at different times and start staggering these things. to see what the effect is. Now I've got a picture that kind of fades into place and maybe when everything else starts happening maybe I want to have it fade out before the title arrives. So I'm going to add some more keyframes. I've got the keyframe with it at 100% opacity here and maybe at this point I want it to start changing. From here to here I'm going to have it fade out. So I'll add another classic tween. Click on the element here and be careful, I've got that circle that's showing up. Now I can hide the circle temporarily so that I can reach to the graphic underneath the circle. That little X there makes it go away. Now I can grab the photo, change its alpha. It's gone to zero. It always remembers the last value you used. So now I have a picture fading up 
and then I have a t title fading in. And I'll bring back the circle just to see what that looks like in place. So, testing it all out. Now, the only thing about that is the timing is kind of lousy at the end of it, so don't be afraid to go to the end and say, I'd like to have everything last for a few frames. You can highlight all the way down all the rows and hit F5 to extend the length of those final frames so that the title stays up on the screen longer. So there it is. Hopefully that helps, gives you an idea of what you can do with the thing. Try it for yourself.